This is Stay of the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Clavel. Welcome. Thank you for joining us again on this Sunday as uh, last Sunday of Black History Month. You know, if you joined us all Black History Month, you know that we've talked about the Black church and different aspects of it with our partnership with WNSB, Blazing Hot 91, in conjunction with the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and also PBS and WHRO. And today we're going to talk about Black History Month itself. Now, we've heard Black History Month, we've grown up with it, for those of you who are uh, 70s babies, 60s babies, and the like. Mm -hmm. But I want to kind of go into uh, the reason why we should. Should we continue to celebrate Black History Month? Why should we celebrate Black History Month? And also, how can we explain, expand Black history itself? Again, but I want to thank you again for joining us. And we have a special guest today with us. Is a good friend of mine, Dr. Will Levis. Will, thank always you again a, for joining us. Always a pleasure, Claville. Always a pleasure, man. You know, Will was on the show in the first, first half hour where we discussed adding soul to the message and discussing, you know, is it how have we missed the mark? you know, in, in talking about health care to African-Americans. And he's back again here to join us as we talk about Black History Month. Will, you know, when was the first time that you remember in school or in church or the community a Black History Month uh, program? Yeah, I think actually it was in, I first became aware of Black History Month for my parents who were very much stalwarts of Black history, particularly my mom. You know, being an Afro, um, a, a Pan-Africanist, uh, my father was very much stressful in education. So I can first remember it be talked about in the home, but then, you know, I think the actual program probably occurred at school and it was probably something about Frederick Douglass and, you know, Harriet Tubman and maybe Booker T and Martin yeah. Luther King. Martin and that King. was it. <laughs> and that was it, you know, and that was essentially it. You know, that, that was a wrap for Black history. But um, obviously, you know, we've since learned that Black history, you know, predates, you know, Africans arriving on these shores. So it goes much deeper than that. And I thank God for Carter G. Woodson, you know, Absolutely. one of my her heroes, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, for establishing Black Negro History Week, which expanded to Black History Month to, that we know as today. Yeah. I mean, you're talking 1926, Carter G. Mm -hmm. Woodson, the Harvard-trained historian, you know, who was really a visionary. You know, and, you know, again, him, W.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, other great thinkers of, of yesteryear, Frederick Douglass. And, and, and a little known black history fact is that Carter G. Woodson actually went to Lincoln University for about a semester. And then he left and I'm not sure why he did, but he, he was a. Uh, at Lincoln for about a semester and then went on to earn his Ph.D. Absolutely. And look, the reason why Will <laughs> mentions Lincoln University, because he is a proud graduate of Lincoln University. Uh, there, and currently running for a position on the board there. So absolutely, man, absolutely. who loves his institution, just like here, you know, we love Norfolk State University where WNSB mm -hmm. is, you know, but again, a visionary in 1926. And. And what people don't realize is that, it's, like you said, it started out as Negro History Week uh, to coincide with the birthdays of two figures that are tremendous in African-American experience, who are, of course, President Lincoln and then also Frederick, Frederick Douglass. Douglass. Absolutely. You know, in, you know, Will, you know, I, I believe that I, I know we look at people who are out front. Right. And they get the notoriety and the like, you know, but. You know, in, 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 in my in my time, I found that the most influential people many times are the people you don't even know about that are Absolutely. talking to those who have the power, right? The power to move the needle. And and Frederick Douglass was definitely one of those individuals mm -hmm. uh, to move the needle. You know, he was a uh, one of the main advisors to Abraham Lincoln, you know, during that time period. And of course we know uh, Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass played a major part uh, in um, uh, the abolishing slavery, uh, in galvanizing the Union, African-American soldiers serving right. in the military. Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass was a big proponent of that to show, quote unquote, that the Negro, uh, of course, known as African-Americans today, but the Negro uh, loved his country, even though, I, 
you know, again, he, that was to show it, but we know we did because we built it, right? Uh, Absolutely. And, Absolutely. You know, I mean, and, and you know, uh, Frederick Douglass is one of our Jeremias, you know, his, his famous um, Fourth of July speech. I mean, continues to resonate uh, today. So you're right. I mean, he was critical and one of the, you know, he's among one of the founding fathers of this nation, li literally. Because of his push for liberation and to, to push the nation to actually be what it had promised it would be, a nation for all people, you know, you know freedom, justice for all. Absolutely. And then, you know, we went from uh, Negro History Week mm -hmm. uh, because, well, first of all, again, the reason why Carter G. Wilson created it is because he felt that America itself really did not understand the contributions of African Americans. Mm -hmm or the Negro to America. So it was it was to educate America and the world, okay, right. because he was also a visionary of the world citizen in understanding uh, how African-Americans and the Black experience Absolutely. really impacted the world because America impacted the world at that time. So, and it was, it was not only to educate America, educate the world, but also bring into remembrance of African-American or the Negro at that time the, the, the benefits, uh, the contributions of great people of African descent. Right. You know? and, and, to, and to show the resilience and, and, and greatness and intelligence and faithfulness, you know, godly faithfulness of a people to be able to point out that we, if anyone, you know, have undergone a, a, a tremendous attack in this country, the, the, our indigenous brothers and sisters obviously, you know, suffered a great sacrifice for this country to be built. And we as enslaved people suffered a, a, a tremendous sacrifice for this nation to be built. So to ignore, you know, these peoples and these sacrifices that happen is at the detriment of the nation. Absolutely. Itself, you know, and our culture of African-Americans, what we were able to do, what our ancestors were able to do, is you know a term called neoculturation, where you take different pieces and parts of other cultures, combine with your own, and create a new new cultural phenomenon. Yeah. So that's what we were doing. That's what we did. You know, our music <laughs> is original American music. Soul food the, is the, original. Uh, is original to American. This is this is a delicacy. This is uh, a food that has been developed from influences from indigenous, from African, from yeah. Uh, Europe, and it was the black uh, servants of people like Jefferson and and um, and Washington. I believe it was a chef called Hercules who was the first celebrity chef. Well, he was a black man. Yeah. So, and he was creating American original American cuisine. And so, in other words, people people came to for his food, not yeah. just so much for the meetings or guests at his, at his house. But for the food that he was cooking, because they heard about this guy. Right. And he's creating it by combining these different cultural influences and making it original American cuisine. So this is what our culture has done throughout. You see that permeating throughout several, many, many ways, many arenas. And this is why black people. You know, as I like to, I believe we had it right when we said Afro American people. <laughs> right, right. You because know, <laughs> the people of Africa, you know, the, the, the middle passes, descendants. This is what we have been, why we're so important to this nation. Absolutely, absolutely. And then uh, you talk about food. I just want to throw this in there. Not only were we creating these dishes, but we were creating it without formal, quote unquote, formal training, right? Uh, we were taking a little bit here, a little bit there and going, you know, through our God-given creativity and ingenuity. A lot of, you know, the Creole uh, cuisine of, of, of Louisiana is just that, you know, where Africans took French and Spanish and African uh, spices and they combined it all together and created this phenomenal, these phenomenal dishes that people fly in from all over the world. Just to have a little gumbo, a little etouffee, a exactly. little po' boy, you know, you know, a little red beans and rice. <laughs> uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh oh, we getting hungry. And then the interesting thing is that, as you mentioned, those dishes, right? For example, because food is a is a a very good way of being able to trace a people's culture and see similarities. Absolutely. Well, you talk about red beans and rice. Well, you go down to Caribbean. <laughs> you're going to some of that, right? You go rice and peas. 
You that's right. You go you go in the, into the deep south. You go into Alabama. You go to the north to the northwest. You're going to see <laughs> these similarities within our culture because and and that's one of the things that's powerful about our culture also that is very portable because we've right. been able to adapt different cultures. A lot of times when people are exposed to us, right, they see parts of their culture in us. And in, it in our culture, exactly. It resonates with them, you know. Absolutely. So this is why, for example, the most recent example that we have of that is hip hop. The ability to be able to remix and take and match and to take things and flip it around and make it fresh and new. That is uniquely African-American. And that's why that particular culture artifact art form has been so powerful and has traveled so far and why. Absolutely. You listen to Stay of the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Clavel. Today, we are talking with Dr. Will Avis as we talk about Black History Month on this last day in February. You know, we talk about the importance of Black History Month, why we should still celebrate it, and what we can learn about it. 757-823-9110, 823 9110. Let us know your thoughts about when you first started celebrating your first memory of Black History Month and the importance of Black History Month to you. Now, Will, we just started talking about Negro History Week, right, created by Carter G. Woodson, but it turned into Black History Month under Gerald Ford, President Gerald Ford, 1976. And I know a lot of times we attach Gerald Ford, of course, to taking over for Richard Nixon and the pardon of Richard Nixon and the like. Uh, but there were some good things that Gerald Ford did do uh, outside of what we perceive to be negative on his resume. And one of those things were creating and signing a bill to have February as Black History Month. And, and I want to I want to uh, uh, give a quote here that that he stated, which I think is so important even to this day. He said the country needed to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of Black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Mm -hmm. I think that still resonates today. And I think it goes, and it will, I I think it goes to the very heart and the nature of why Carter G. Woodson created, you know, Negro History Week within itself. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 how can you say it much clearer, you know? And also the fact that, you know, a big part of America culture is these contradictions. I mean, if you've been to the Museum of African American History, like oh, you see the story, I mean, I would tell anyone, please go there because not only will you get an understanding of our culture, but you will understand our country. And our country is just full of contradictions in leadership, but yet and still, but in spite of, we continue to progress on. So like you said, you look at a Gerald Ford and he's not typically associated with doing anything positive for African-American history, but we'll turn to Bill Clinton. We say, oh, he's, you know, he was actually the first (laughs) black president before we had a first black president. Yet his policies were extremely destructive. Detrimental. Detrimental to the black community, particularly if you compare them to Ford's, right? So this is, one of the things about us as a people, we've been, been uniquely positioned because of Absolutely. the oppression to actually be able to put a, mir- a mirror in front of America to see itself, to see its contradictions, and to maybe strive to become a better a better nation. But America continues to be a country of a lot of contradictions. So people who you would have thought, you know, were just a loss and just totally anti-black. Uh, you find, no, they actually weren't. And some of the people that you think were so pro-Black, well, actually weren't, you know. And <laughs> that's why understanding history is so important. Absolutely. Now, some people believe, of course, you're always going to have naysayers. You know, you have, you have proponents and opponents. You know, that is human nature, right? right? So, you know, but I believe the important thing is to agree to disagree. So let's get to it. There's some people believe that Black History Month is not needed at all because it ignores, and matter of fact, I've heard this uh, when I was in school and I still hear it from adults, individuals say, why do we have Black History Month? It's racist because we don't have a white history month. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> you're right. It, it, you know, you give yourself a little pause. And then, you know, <laughs> I would ask, you know, you know, how, how many pages? I said, go to your history book. What, fifth grade, eighth grade? 
12th grade and go through it and tell me how many pages do you see of African-American contribution to the American experience, right? So for the most part, if you got a 500 page uh, history book, maybe 50 pages at the most, and I'm being very generous, I'm including the, the glossary and the index and all that, is, is, is actually committed to the African-American experience. I mean, so what would you say to those individuals that say, we don't need Black History Month because it excludes White History Month? Well, I say that that's, the, that's that all lives matters mentality. You know, when the Black Lives Matter movement you know, erupted, people were so quick to knee jerk and say, well, all lives matter. And, and you're not understanding that what you're doing is you're denying the fact that here's a group of people who have been marginalized. And what we're saying is, no, we matter too. You know, um, um, uh, uh, Langston Hughes wrote the poem, you know, I too sing America. Right. You say we matter too. So when you keep saying, no, everybody matters, what you're doing is you're denying that this group has been marginalized. So that's what I say to people is that for you to say, well, you don't need black history because you don't have a white history month is because all of the months are white history months. You, as you just said, you look at the, you look at the, the textbooks, the textbooks are written from a white perspective on history. The textbooks don't show the indigenous people's perspective as it pertains to these same events, it's not showing the African Americans' perspective or the others who have been involved. You know, the history that we see is from that mindset of, well, the victor claims the spoils, the victor gets to tell the narrative. So when we get, I, I like the saying that I've seen out there that, you know, all lives matter when black lives matter. That's the mindset we need to, we need to have when we are, truly have a level playing field that people like Martin Luther King fought for, then yeah, you, you maybe you can say at that point that you won't need a Black History Month. But as long as you are still not fully aware of the contributions that people have made, the important contributions, obviously we need. Yeah. And, and it kind of segues into, uh, you know, my, my next point where, you know, when we talk about Black History Month and the need for it, mm -hmm. I think we do still need it. It's obvious until our history reflects all of the experiences of yeah. African Africans in America. And when I say all of the experience, I mean the good, the bad and the ugly. Right. Because a lot of our experiences have been at the hands of the white establishment or the government, if, if, if people want to call it that, limiting the advancement of African uh, Americans or people of Afro descent right. into advancing into society. I mean, so we've got to include Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? Exactly. I mean, as a matter of fact, you know, we've had now, like you said, COVID's unveiled a lot of things and it's also un 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 unveiled and uh, how history has been hidden purposefully, yeah. you know, from society. So, you know, know, Tulsa was, was a terrible, terrible time in our nation and in Tulsa itself. But we got to tell that story, right? We still got to tell the story of forced, uh, uh, the Tuskegee experiment, which we do. But we also have to tell the story of forced sterilization in right. the Mississippi Delta, which Fannie Lou Hamer was a part of, right? right. We got to tell the story of Hella cells, right? Of, of, of research and science taking cells out of her body without her uh, people's uh, consent and still using it today, yes. you know, and making money off of it. Right. So AIDS research, all types of research has been done off of this black woman's body that nobody had permission to take. I mean, so but it's not just those terrible stories of our, our bad, the bad history, which came up on us, but the great history. That's I know right. a lot of times we look at inventions, you know, the street light and, and so forth and the stop sign. And we just take it for granted. But we don't tell the story of how African-Americans were involved in creating these the, these instruments and mechanisms all the way from 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 the plantation all the way up to a you know uh, technology after right. America's have been the forefront of that yeah i mean we have an african american that just recently went in space you know and so we black history month allows this time you know to be able to focus and say wait a minute let's take a break and look at the greatness of black culture and how it's permeating. And I think, as you said, the more that we can have that kind of equality, that equal opportunity to tell your story to be permeated throughout the year, 
then yeah, then you you have less of a need for it. But why would you feel that there should be less of a need for it? To me, someone who's talking that way is saying, well, maybe they're saying this is not something that they want to learn about. Maybe they're saying this is not something they want to be exposed to. Because me, as an American, as a, as a member of the human family, I'm curious about all kinds of different people and cultures and want to know and respect them. So anybody who's saying, you know, you don't need it at this point and you don't have a white history bump, uh, the unstated uh, message that they're delivering is, you know, I'm not interested in learning about you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I want to take a look at this article that was written by Jamar Tisby of The Witness, uh, witness.bcc.com. And he talks about five reasons we should celebrate Black history still. And, and I want to throw these out there to you and give me your thoughts about it, Will. He says we, we should celebrate Black history because, of one, it celebrates and honors the historic leaders of the Black community. You know, he says doing this allows us to take a pause and remember their stories so we can commemorate their achievements. Oh, I agree. I mean, the leaders are who inspire you to see what it is that you've been called to do and what you can do. And a lot of times when you learn the stories of these leaders, you find out that they really came from beginnings that were much like your own. Yeah. And so they have more in common with you than you may think. And these leaders, like I'm recalling right now, um, a time I had to interview uh, the late John Lewis and spent time with him on when I had my uh, radio show. Over also, your fraternity brother, right? Yeah, over, also Phi Beta Sigma fraternity brother. And in his presence and learning his story, I mean, he made me feel like I was, he was honored to be with me. <laughs> and I left him feeling like, hey, I got more to do. I'm not doing enough. Uh, I, I got to I gotta get going. So when you learn about the leaders, uh, they inspire you to see what it is that you can do. I mean, I mean, I just saw the movie um, about uh, Billy Holiday that um, that that is out now. I mean, powerful yeah. movie that shows you how much of a fighter and a resilient woman that she was. We we used to seeing Billy as a tragic figure, tragic you know, Miss yeah, Miss Holiday. But in that movie, you know, you see about how powerful, about how strong, about how steadfast she was to her art and to her people. So yeah. these stories are very important. Yes. Yeah, and that story is told by Lee Daniels, uh, who yes. directed that, and 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 we see how we're telling stories from our perspective, and which is very important because we see it through two different lenses. Which is why, again, I believe African American History or Black History Month itself is so very important. You know, right. and um, you know we should celebrate it every single day. Also, uh, Jamar writes, he says, celebrating us, it helps us to be a better steward. Of the privileges that we've gained, and you know, and and Will, my comment to that is when when I when I look at the fifties and sixties, and I grew up, you know, seventies and eighties, and my neighborhood, African American neighborhood, I we had, you know, black business, African and black men owned the gas station, right. barber shops, beauty shops, insurance company, black lawyer law office, of course, the repair shop. Uh, we had the uh, the, the daycare. In the, in, in the community. And everywhere we went, funeral homes, insurance companies, we went, you know, we did a lot of business with Black business because that's where we live. Right. And we and we saw Black men and, and women carry themselves in a way of, uh, with, with and I'll, I'll just say a, a way of importance, right? Because, right. and we right. looked upon them and said, I want to be like that. And, you know, sometimes I scratch my head, you know, and I see how you know drugs were poured into our communities and have decimated them, right, and to now break all that down, yeah, you know, and and and, and it breaks all it down, and it, and it really comes and it breaks my heart. But I know that if we understand our history, you know, we can better build ourselves up again, right? Build back black communities better. And I took that, I, I took that little piece <laughs> from uh, Joe Biden's uh, infrastructure bill, Build Brown. Back America Better, right? So we could build Black America back better if we understand our history. <laughs> yeah, I think you're absolutely right, especially now because now that the economy is open to us in ways that it was not open to us then because of segregation, now we have the opportunity to be able to produce product and sell it to the world. 
Yeah. So we again, if we can understand Absolutely. our tradition of entrepreneurship that we come from and say, OK, now we have more opportunities than those brothers and sisters had, you know, that we had more opportunity than Madam C.J. Walker had who became the first black, Ooh. the first woman millionaire. Right. We now have a more multicultural, more global market that we can sell to. So why not uh, be inspired and get moving and get going? Absolutely. And, and you know, when you open up your eyes and we talked about hip hop earlier, like I saw a documentary where it showed hip hop around the world. Every mm -hmm. hip hop has touched every single country in the world, you know, <laughs> from for, from the South Korean Asian movement. I, I saw a rap group in Iran. Man, I, I told you, you, you remember I tell the story about being in <laughs> Mongolia and you catch playing hip hop. I'm walking in the street in Mongolia. And they catch playing hip hop and jumped out the car and took a picture with me. I mean, but yeah. but go ahead. Yeah. You know, and I was watching a documentary again also about, uh, um, uh, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was actually Mandela, Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. And they were going through a shanty town and you saw the name Biggie and Tupac written on a shanty uh, house, right? In the shanty town. I'm saying, wait a minute, did I just see that? Yeah. You know, but it tells you how the influence of Black Americans, again, going back, and well, as you said, how African-American culture influences everything. You know, another thing, Will, and we're running out of time, but celebrating Black history provides us an opportunity, I believe, to highlight our best and brightest of Black history and culture because so many times, you know, we're displayed in a negative light. Also, it helps us create awareness for our people and remind us, I think the most important, that Black history is our history. It's a miracle. Amen. Issue. Amen. <laughs> and that's why what you're doing with your show, and you mentioned Lee Daniels and other filmmakers, other artists, is so important to be true to that, to that part of the art, to, to show our best and our brightest and to inspire, you know, inspire us, inspire the world. Well, look, I've loved I've loved this time with you. And of course, we spent a lot of time together. Very quickly, we're in our last 60 seconds of the show. Tell our audience where they can learn more about our project and what we do. LaVisaandClaville.com, LaVisaandClaville.com, a podcast where we join forces to talk about the issues that are most important to our community in a way that everybody can understand it and break it down and actually be empowered to make change. And also right. on social media. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at LaVise and Claville. You can find Black History every single day, 365. We highlight our, our treasures of Black history at LaVise and Claville. Dr. Will LaVise, thank you so much for joining us here on State of the Water. Exactly. And for those of you that want to that wanna catch us, you can go on our YouTube page and catch us at WNSB Blazing Hot 91, and you can view our State of the Water right there. And we'll see you on next week as we bring policymakers, movers and shakers to you, the community, to talk about it the way that you want. Until then, we'll see you next time.